my name is Chris and you're watching an instructional video that will demonstrate how to alter some of the more basic configurations within the Windows 2000 Advanced Server Operating System. So to begin with we're going to right click on the desktop and go down to properties. That's going to bring up the basic properties menu. And this first tab we're going to start with is background. Notice right now we have this just plain blue bland background. And Windows comes with several image files already installed for use as a background. So we're just going to go through this list and find one we like. Like that one looks good. We're going to hit apply. Hit yes. And there's our background. Now if you want it to fill up the entire screen, you have two different options that you can do. You can tile it, which just sticks a bunch of them together, corner to corner. Or you can stretch it, which will just enlarge the image to where it fits in your desktop. Now, if you decide to go with center, you can click on the pattern here and we'll say critters and hit OK and hit apply and you'll notice the outer edge has changed. Additionally you can come up here to browse if you have other photos that you want to use for your background you can find select those and use them instead. Now for the screensaver you just click on this little scroll down bar and there's all kinds of different options like um, 3D flying objects 3D text now when you select this option here password protected what will happen is when it kicks over to the screensaver it logs the person out so when you come over and move the mouse, instead of going back to the desktop, it'll go to the login screen. This is to prevent if you go away from the keyboard for an extended period of time and it kicks over to the screensaver, some random person or someone you don't want on the account can't just come over, move the mouse, and start doing stuff. They'd have to know your password at that point. Now over here, we can alter how long the computer has to remain idle before the screensaver kicks in. And then we can go up to settings. And this box will change based on which screensaver we're using. In this case, it's the text. We get to alter what we want it to say. Or we can just have it show what time it is. It can be a solid color or we can add a texture to it which Windows comes with a bunch preloaded. We can change how long, how big we want the text to be, how quickly and slowly it moves, the resolution on it, and if we want it to just wobble, kind of go up and down from left to right like a seesaw or just randomly spin around. And then we can even choose what font it shows up in. So we're just going to hit OK. And see how fast it's spinning? And it shows the time. Now, appearance. This is your color scheme. You can load up some preloaded ones. Notice the box colors change. And if we were to hit apply, see how everything changes color now? Alternatively, we can also come in here and change things like that and change sp specific things however we want. So we don't actually want to make those changes, so we're going to cancel, right click, go back to properties and come back up to appearance. Now I'm just going to change this back to Windows Classic and hit apply. Then we're going to move over to effects. You notice we're skipping web. It's because it's a little bit more in depth and detailed. And not exactly considered a basic configuration. So 
here you're going to see the different icons and we can actually change the way these look for example my documents here we're going to change icon so we're going to change it to that one and hit apply and there you go and some of these have a few more options than the others the recycle bin has two different icons one for empty one for full you can change some of these like use large icons and the icons will get bigger you can smooth the edges of the fonts you can show the windows contents while you're dragging it if you notice see how it's just got the blank there's nothing in there well with that check marked it just moves the whole box now we're going to go over here to settings this is where you affect the resolution and color scheme. Now, usually it defaults to the best color scheme available, but if for whatever reason you want to use a lower one, you can do that. And then the resolution, this is the amount of pixels from here to here, left to right, and this is the amount of pixels from bottom, top to bottom. So this determines your screen size. You'll notice everything's kind of, it looks like it's getting bigger, even though this is getting smaller because what's happened is the overall screen size is shrinking down so that's why these are getting bigger and because it doesn't shrink the icons it just shrinks how much space you have on the screen so the icons will look like they're taking up more space because you have less space now when you actually change the resolution It'll ask you if you want to do that and hit OK. And then you get 15 seconds to decide if you want to keep it or not. Because after 15 seconds, it automatically reverts back to how it is. This is in case you accidentally put in a resolution your monitor can't handle and it just goes black. And you can't find the no button to tell it you don't want to keep that. And that's it for the basic configurations. My name is Chris, and you've been watching my instructional video demonstrating how to alter basic configurations within the Windows 2000 Advanced Server. I hope you enjoyed watching and you found this information helpful.